This would be regarded as one of the hardest exam questions on moments, uh, non-uniform rods. But obviously guys, you remember this is mechanics, so it can't be all that bad. It's just mostly yap. So I'd appreciate the thumbs up for me having to write this essay. My forearms are burning. So it says AB is a non-uniform rod of mass 10 kg and length three meters. AB rests on two supports placed at C and D, where AC equals DB equals 0 0.6. Dive attach attaches a 9 kg mass to the rod at point at a point 0 0.4 meters to the left of D and measures the reaction force at C. He then moves it to a point 0 0.4 meters to the right of D and then measures the reaction force at C. He found in his second measurement, the reaction force at C is one third the reaction force in the first measurement F, uh, in the first measurement, sorry, find the distance of the center of mass from A. Okay, we have two situations, and in those two situations, we form a connection between them. When this happens, guys, you need to draw two separate diagrams, all right? So, we have situation one. We have our two supports. Now, because we're forming a relationship between the reaction at C in two different things, and then you have the reaction at D, uh, we have to be careful about how we uh, name these things. So I wouldn't use RC and RC. So I'm just going to line these up. And also, RD is going to change as well, right? So, uh, what we could do, maybe RC1 and RD1. So, the first situation. Then we have RC2 and RD3. Uh, RD2, sorry. Uh, it's a non-uniform rod of mass 10 kg. So, we don't know where the center of mass is. But it's all relative to A based on the question. They wanted us to find the center of mass relative to A, right? So let's put it off center. Uh, we know that the mass is 10 G. And let's say its distance from A is X, which we're trying to find. Okay. What else do we have? Uh, a, B rests in, on two supports, blah, 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 blah. Dave att attaches 9 kg to the rod 0 0.4 meters to the left of, of D. Yeah. So 9g, 0 0.4 meters to the left. So that is 0 0.4. This is 0 0.6 on either side. Here we have to be careful. Uh, because in the second situation, he moved it to the right of D, 0 0.4. So this is 0 0.4, this would be 0 0.2 then. Okay, because that whole distance was 0 0.6. Now given this, somehow we're going to find out what X is. They did say he found in his second measurement that the reaction force at C is one third the reaction force in his first measurement. So this one is a third of this. So RC2, so we're saying RC2 is one third of RC1. And it kind of makes sense, right? So over here, you can see both of these forces pushing down together. That reaction force is going to be much bigger than here. If we move that force over, it's going to want to tilt eventually, right? This way. So the contact force is going to be much less. I don't really like dealing with thirds. So let's say Three lots of RC2 is RC1. Now what we're going to do is just take moments and um, form the connection between them. Now where would you guys take moments? Probably A, right? Or would it make actually more sense to take it from RD1? If we take it from RD1, so from here, then, which is at D for both of them, if we take moments about there, then we can get rid of those forces, right? It just becomes a bit of an ache to calculate the distances relative to there because they want you to find the distance of the center of mass from A. So, you know, most students would just take moments from A, all right?
but it looks like here, guys, it makes the most sense to take moments from D in both situations. At least this is fixed. We can easily work it out, right? Okay, so let's take moments from D. Now, if we take moments from D, this 9G is going to be a anti-clockwise. And this 10G is also an anti-clockwise. So both of these downward forces are anti-clockwise. And the RC1 is a clockwise. Okay? So let's do the clockwise one first. So RC1 force times this perpendicular distance from where we're taking moments from. What is that? Well, we just need this distance here between C and D. Well, we know, well, they told us in the question that the length of the plank is 3. So we have 3 minus 1.2. We're minusing 0 0.6 from both sides. 3 minus 1.2 is what, 1.8? Guys, I swear, I can't. I can't risk making a mistake here. 1.8, cool. Equals 0 0.4 times 9G. And what are we doing? This 10G. Okay, so this is where it gets a bit orcs. So we need this distance. Okay, we need that distance. We have this is 3. We can do 3 minus 0 0.6 to get this distance. So 3 minus 0 0.6 is 2.4. Then we minus x. So remember that distance is x. So we're subtracting 0 0.6 and x. Okay. Now 3 minus 0 0.6 is indeed 2.4. So, 2.4 minus x. So we've got 10g times 2.4 minus x. Okay. I uh, guess that's it for now. Now let's look at the second situation, taking moments about d. It looks a bit cleaner here. So taking moments about here, this one's a bit more different. This 9G, this downward force on the other side, is actually a clockwise moment. And the RC2 is also clockwise. That one doesn't change. And it means 10G is the only one that is going to be, uh, what is it, anti? So let's talk about RC2 first. So RC2, RC2, also times 1.8, right? That hasn't changed equals. Now I'm tempted to change it right now because then I could cancel things out, right? I could change that RC1 to being 3RC2. Should I do it now? Should I not do it now? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. I'll do it in a sec. So that 1.8 I said is the 9G times that distance 0 0.4. So it's the same as this one, it's just it's on the other side. Remember this one is together with this one, so we're actually adding it. Equals that distance times 10G, which again is the same as this. Okay. Now from here, we need to get rid of these. And we could do that by, yeah, replacing that. I could move that to the other side. Man. Which is the nicest way to do this? This would be much nicer on the other side and then dividing them, right? So, I think I'm just gonna have to write again, man, because otherwise it's just gonna get so messy. So we have RC1, RC1 is three RC2. So this is three RC2. Three times 1.8, three times 1.8 is 5.4. So equation 1 is becoming 5.4 RC2 equals 9 times 0 0.4, which is what, 3.6? Yep. 3.6G. And if you 
well, we're going to have to start multiplying this out anyway, right? So we have 10 times 2.4 is 24G, 24G minus 10GX. Then down here, I have 1.8 RC2. Now this, I'm going to move on to the other side. So I'm going to write this down again, which is 24G minus 10GX minus the um, 3.6G. Now from here, to get rid of the RC2, we're going to divide the two equations. Which gives me 3, right? So 5.4 divided by 1.8, 3. So we're just left with 3 is 3.6 plus 24. I'm just not risking silly mistakes here. 27.6 G minus 10 G X, all divided by 24 minus 3.6, 20.4. G minus 10 G X. Now something very nice happens here, the G's all cancel. And we times through. So, uh, I'm running out of space, man. I'm gonna do it here, just as like writing it a bit small. So three times 20.4 is 61.2. 61.2 minus 30X equals 27.6, 27.6 minus 10x. Twenty-seven point six. Okay, minus 10x, yeah. So that is going to come to that side to make 20x equals 61.2 minus 27.6, x is 1.68. Now we did cancel out all the g's, so we didn't actually use it in calculation, so we can actually leave our answer like this. And that is a hella stressful question, I can't lie. But seven marks, it's all worth it. So guys, save this video because this is one of the hardest non-uniform rod questions they can actually ask you, cheeky simultaneous equations and that. But guys, if you like today's video, if you learned something new, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my A-level maths courses, there is more details in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.